So what is an equatorial mount? What does it do and how exactly does it work? If you ask someone, they would probably think of some weird, over-engineered contraption. Full of adjustments, with cogs and glass lenses. But in reality, an equatorial mount is just a very clever way to use a telescope. We'll be looking at this particular mount, on an Astromaster 130EQ telescope. It seems complex at first but I promise you, after this tutorial you will not only understand how it works, you will also know how to set yours up and start to enjoy the many benefits it provides. As the Earth spins counterclockwise, the objects in the sky slowly move clockwise and also upwards. This means when you're tracking objects, you have to keep making adjustments to compensate for the Earth's rotation. Here the moon moves to the right and upwards, this would mean two axes would need to be adjusted to keep the moon in the lens eyepiece. It would be far easier if we could align the telescope with the equator of the Earth perfectly. Then we would just need to move one axis to track any objects we are observing. This is the main feature of the equatorial mount, and it's really easy to use it when you know how to set it up. Hi, welcome to Reviews by Dave. Now today we're gonna to look at the equatorial mount, because many people have got equatorial mounts and don't really know how to use them. And what you find you end up doing is you're tracking a star and you're moving both slow motion controllers in different directions to keep the star in the eyepiece and it's quite frustrating it makes the experience not as enjoyable as it should be so when you set up an equatorial mount properly what it does it follows the equator of the planet earth therefore when the star moves across the sky your telescope if set up correctly will just track that star perfectly all you'll need to do is move the right ascension knob and that will slowly move your telescope to track the star you want to look at it sounds easy in theory what's important is setting the telescope up in order to do that and once it's set up, it's very, very easy to do so. So there's two things you really need to do before you can get the benefits of your equatorial mount. First thing is you need to find out what your latitude is for where you live. So a quick Google search, and there's various websites that will find your latitude and tell you what it is. You then just need to go to your equatorial mount and set your latitude on your mount. In order to find your own latitude, you just need to search for one of the many websites that help with this. Put your town or area in the search box. Then you will have your specific latitude for where you will be using your telescope. Here is the part of the mount you need to set to your own latitude. The numbers are clearly marked and you just set it as best you can. It doesn't have to be exact but it helps set the angle of the pivot when you track celestial objects. These are the parts you need to loosen off to make the adjustments. Once set, you can leave it fixed, unless of course, you decide to take your telescope to a different location. The next thing you need to do, when you've set your latitude, you need to now point the equatorial mount or the telescope towards Polaris. So you would have your telescope in the normal method, in a normal basic setting, and you literally point the telescope tube and the mount at Polaris. And that way you've, you've aligned your telescope with the North Star. Let's just see how we do that. Assuming you live in the Northern Hemisphere, you would point them out at the North Star, called Polaris. Using various phone applications you can easily search and find it, even inside your home. If you live on the Southern Hemisphere, like Australia, then you would set your mount at the South Celestial Pole, found in the same way. Being on the equator, you've now aligned the actual mount with the equator. So wherever you now move your telescope, it won't matter because you've got the equator aligned with the mount. Another tip as well is you'll probably find that your telescope's all over the place. You can see here it's not balanced, it's, it's falling around. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just get it so it balances a bit better in this direction here. And it's literally just getting some more weight at the front end. Now they come with these, these tubes that you can loosen and you can 
because it's a band and a tube between two bands, you can move your telescope backwards and forwards to get that perfect balance. And you can see now it's holding position a lot better. You might want to also adjust these weights to give you the right counterweight for the angle you've got your telescope so that when you're observing stars, you can put it in position and it will stay where you've put it. So if I've got the weights too far that way, it tends to wander, as you can see. So just move the weight a little bit forward and now it holds position perfectly for me. And if I was tracking a star now, I can literally just use the right ascension. And as I turn that, it will slowly bring the tripod towards the right or clockwise, tracking the star that I want to look at. Very important to balance your telescope. That's one of the best tips you can do for ease of use. Another thing to bear in mind is when you are tracking a star, we've obviously got the, the mount pointing towards Polaris, but the star I want to look at might be over there. What you don't want to do is turn your mount around because you'll lose the benefit of the equatorial positioning. So all you'll do is you'll find the best way to track that star by rearranging the telescope. So in this occasion, I'll put the telescope like this. Or I might even decide to twist it that way so I've got better access to the eyepiece. I might just re rebalance it by pushing it forward a little bit. Just move this weight forward a bit. Now I've got a quite well balanced telescope and I can now track whatever I want to look at through the eyepiece there. What will happen now is when I turn the right ascension, it will track exactly on the equator of the Earth. Therefore, it will follow that star across the sky. And all I will need to do to observe that star for as long as I want is turn one of the slow motion controllers, which is the right ascension. The only reason this works is because I've got the equatorial mount set up here perfectly. And that means that we've got the shape of the Earth on the actual pivot point of the telescope, as you can probably see there. That's the perfect angle to follow the equator. Therefore, all the stars in the sky are moving in that direction. All I need to do is to turn the slow motion controller to track that star. What you can also buy is a small motor to put onto this part of your telescope and then you can press a button and a small motor will turn that for you. Therefore, you can quite easily enjoy tracking stars, tracking other planets and things with just the push of a button and you just literally just look through your eyepiece and slowly but surely the motor will pull the telescope to follow the star through the sky. Now because you've got your equatorial mount set up correctly, that will track that star perfectly across the equator, therefore very minimal adjustments will be needed for you to enjoy stargazing with this telescope and with your equatorial mount. So to further explain how the equatorial mount works, here is the part of the mount that, that tracks the stars and as you can see it's circular like the globe and it's aligned now with the equator of the planet. Therefore as we track the star this will perfectly follow whichever you're looking at with very minimal adjustments required. Now it's worth bearing in mind that this is the, the clutch controller for the right ascension and there's your slow motion controller. If this clutch is too loose, when you turn that, you'll probably find not a lot, not a lot will happen. So a, a tip for you there is to make sure you tighten the clutch on the right ascension so that when you do begin to turn the slow motion controller, hopefully you can see there that the mount is now turning towards a clockwise direction, which is obviously countering the anti-clockwise direction of the Earth. Therefore, it will perfectly track whatever star you're gazing at at that time. And again, we mentioned about fitting a motor on this particular mount. This is the part of the telescope where the motor would go because this is the part here that controls movement of the telescope. So now I've given you an idea of how to use it. Please put this knowledge into practice. It does seem complicated at first, but once you point your mount at Polaris and get the setting for your latitude on your tripod done, that's it. Once that's done, you do it once. And generally, you know where to point your tripod in the future. You'll find you'll, you'll have so much more enjoyment out of tracking stars by just turning one controller. Or if you decide to invest in the motor for the telescope, you just put the motor on and you can enjoy tracking stars by using the motor. So I hope this helped. If it has helped you, please give me a like. Obviously, subscribe if you haven't. There's going to be more videos and more features coming on, on telescopes and the stargazing in general. But as soon as we get the weather, we will get some good footage on for you. Thanks for watching.